This is the Gerber Variable Scale, made in the 1950s by the Gerber Scientific Instrument Company. Looks like a ruler. In the middle it's got a normal scale in inches, below it is a logarithmic scale, and above it is a reciprocal scale. This thing slides back and forth with an indicator line, kind of like a slide rule. But that's all just razzle dazzle. The real business is over here. Another scale marked 0 to 10, which stretches and slides when you slide the slidey slide. My last video was about the Gerber abacus. This is the Gerber variable scale. Can you see the theme? The theme is GERB! The variable scale was designed by H. Joseph Gerber, an Austrian Holocaust survivor who came to the United States in 1940. Gerber went to university in the state of New York, and he apparently invented the variable scale to help him do his homework. Apparently, he pulled the elastic out of his pajama pants and made ruler markings on it. That's a stretchy ruler. The Gerber family still has it. This thing became the flagship product of his company, Gerber Scientific Instruments, based in Hartford, Connecticut. Gerber came up with some other stuff, and the company did pretty well. And they're still around today. They're still based in Hartford. It all started with a guy ripping elastic out of his pants, and now apparently the Gerber company is a major player in the automated textile manufacturing. Gerber knows fashion now, huh. I figured I gotta do it like Joe Gerber. I got my Jimmy Jams here. I really like these ones, but I have a very important YouTube video to make. And now I've got an amazing stretchy ruler. Well, is it really amazing? I mean, a normal ruler isn't supposed to be stretchy. Actually, the whole point of a ruler is that the markings are positioned at very specific distances. If you make it stretchy, then doesn't that defeat the purpose? And really, I think this is part of Joe Gerber's genius. Just the realization that a stretchy ruler could be useful at all. Turns out the stretchy ruler has tons of different uses. I was kind of shocked at how many cute little problems this thing can solve. Like here, let's say I have this line on a piece of paper and I want to make seven equal subdivisions. I just stretch it so that this whole distance is seven units on the ruler, and then I just mark off the divisions. Gerb! Anyway, this is the real thing, the Gerber variable scale. The stretchable scale is marked 0 to 10 with red markings, the halves are blue markings, and the white ones are tenths. It's a bit hard to see, but what you're looking at is actually a spring with 100 coils. Instead of a round helical shape like a normal spring, the spring is triangular. That means that it makes a straight line on the side so you can read it like a ruler. Each individual coil is painted either white, blue, or red so you can see it. Now let's have some fun with this thing. The variable scale can do lots of cute measurement jobs that are hard to do otherwise. Like how about this? I can use it to directly measure distances on a printed map. You know, most maps will have a scale line printed on it. On this one, this far is one mile. Well, I can just slide my variable scale to line up with the same scale there. I'll make it so one mile measures four on the variable scale. So each red unit on the variable scale is a fourth of a mile. And now I can just measure whatever I want on the map directly, and we won't have to convert any units. Looks like it's just about one and a half miles from the end of Hartford Reservoir Number 2 to the other end of Reservoir Number 3. We gerbin now! Alright, here's another simple measurement task. I got this graph here, and let's say I want to know exactly where this special point here is on the graph, where the curve turns around there. Let's just find the x value, the horizontal position. Now, on the grid, I can see it looks like it's about halfway between the 1 and the 2. But check this out, I can just stretch the variable scale, and it'll instantly give me subdivisions as fine as I want. See, I'll stretch the scale to give me two full units across this grid square, and now I can read the position as actually something like 1.55. One of the main original applications of this thing was multiplying a graph by a constant. Like, here's the graph of one function. Let's also try to draw the graph of two times that same function, and also a half times that function. All right, I'm going to put the x-axis at zero on the scale and slide the scale so that the actual curve hits it on the two. And then half of that will be wherever the one is and two times that will be wherever the four is. So I'm going to mark off the point where the one is and the point where the four is. Now you just do this for as many points as you like.
connect the dots. So I got one curve that's a half of the original and one curve that's two times the original. This seems like just a cute little trick, but actually this kind of charting on paper was marketed as a real killer functionality of Gerber's variable scale. Nowadays any useful data or graphs like this would be in electronic form, so you never really need to do this kind of thing by hand on paper. But back in Joe Gerber's day, data analysis and manipulation all had to be done on paper, and there simply wasn't any better way to do this kind of thing. My only complaint is it seems to be oriented for left-handed people, which is fine, but a weird choice. Like how I was just doing it, I line up the zero on the x-axis and then I go to make a mark using the scale. But the scale is sitting on the right side of where I want to mark, so my pencil needs to approach from the left side, which is kind of awkward for a right-handed person. And maybe I'm doing it wrong. Hey, did I mention I have the original box? It's got two snappy snaps. Look at that smooth upholstery in there. Makes me want to just crawl in. And I also have the original calibration tool. Every little part of this thing can be unscrewed and recalibrated if things slip a little. It's just a stretchy ruler, but you can tell Joe Gerber really wanted this to be as professional a device as possible. Let's try one more simple job. I got this paper full of MC swags. Let's say I want to count how many are in this box here. Obviously I'm going to count the number across and the number up and down, but I don't want to count those little things up with my hand like a fool. No! Check it out. I can stretch my scale across so that one MC swag measures one unit. And then I can just look up the marking at the end, and it's four units, so that's four MC swags in the vertical direction. I can do the same thing this way. You can see there's seven of them. So that's seven across and four down, so there's 28 MC swags in that rectangle. I guess I could have just counted by hand, but if these were much smaller things and there were a lot more of them, I'd much rather use the variable skill than try to count them by hand. I guess that's kind of silly. I mean, how many times do you really want to count up things on a swag sheet? I mean, most swag sheets will tell you right on the back how many there are, but if you really had to count them, how else would you do it? Most of my videos are about old machines which have been made entirely obsolete by modern electronics, but this thing here actually I don't know of any modern tool that can do this kind of thing better than the Gerber variable scale. Just think about it. Even if you have a computer or a calculator or a smartphone or whatever, can you divide a line by paper into five equal parts or seven equal parts? A computer just isn't very helpful for that. Sure, you can measure it with a ruler and then divide by seven with a calculator, then measure out the seven divisions again with the ruler, but I bet you can't do all that faster than me on the variable scale. This thing's about 70 years old, but still unsurpassed by modern technology. Not bad, Joe.